Okay, does everybody have their band practice on? We're going to get started. Everyone got a sign? Yeah. Cool. I'll go up before speaking. It's like back to our fracking earthquake um, display that we have going on here. Disposal of fracking wastewater in Ohio and Arkansas has led to increase in earthquakes. So please come add to our fractures. Write a message if you'd like. Um, and you can do that throughout today. So, hang on one second. Pretty good, how you doing? Hey, what's happening? Hey, Okay, guys. So, we're going to get started. Um, there is a sign-in sheet. Please sign in with Jean over there wearing the hat. So my name is Rita. Um, I am with Western New York Drilling Defense and Food and Water Watch. Thank you all for being here today. So what's essentially going to happen is we're going to hear from um, a number of speakers. Then we're going to have this awesome little puppet show over here that involves Senator Grisanti. So I implore you to stay and check out the puppet show. Um, and then our speakers are going to be delivering our letters and our petition signatures, which are right behind me. You can see in these boxes. Senator Grisanti is going to be getting this lovely delivery today from us. Yay! So today, concerned Buffalo residents join community leaders, business owners, and representatives from consumer, environmental, and social justice groups in support of a statewide ban on the toxic, toxic technology of hydrofracking. We stand outside of State Senator Mark Rosanti's office, chair of the Senate Environmental Conservation Committee, who has yet to publicly support a ban on fracking in New York. At the end of the speaking portion of this rally, the speakers will go in to deliver 1,766 petition signatures from local residents and 102 letters from local organizations and businesses, all calling on the senator to support a ban on fracking for New York. Woo! Senator Grisanti must stand with us and co-sponsor SB 4220 and bring it up for a vote, as the bill has been languishing in his committee since last year. The bill would ban fracking completely and stop the New York Department of Environmental Conservation from issuing permits to allow drilling in the state, which they're hoping to do later this year. Mm. Legislative session closes next week, and in spite of overwhelming evidence that fracking cannot be done safely, the Senate has refused to act on legislation to protect New Yorkers from this dangerous, polluting practice. As the legislative session draws to a close, our elected officials need to know that their inaction will not go unnoticed. Put people first, Senator Grisanti, not industry. Many of the people who signed the petition, as well as several businesses that have asked Senator Grisanti to ban fracking, are located in the south towns of Buffalo, such as Hamburg and Orchard Park, which, as you might know, are part of Senator Grisanti's newly drawn district for this year's re-election. Senator Grisanti must begin to represent the people's interests if he wants to represent us in the Senate. Fracking is not just an environmentalist issue anymore. It could impact us all. Western New York would be hit hard if fracking moves forward in the state. The DEC study currently recommends that horizontal drilling be banned completely in New York City and Syracuse's watersheds, but no Western New York watershed has been protected. Western New York watersheds would be susceptible to contamination from drilling operations, and local residents may be forced to rely on outdated water filtration systems as a line of defense. Also, issues around wastewater importation and gas infrastructure are a huge concern for our area. Buffalo's neighbor, Niagara Falls, is the first location in the state to claim their desire to treat New York's chemical-laden and radioactive fracking wastewater. And the fight is not over there, as we've heard that the Niagara Falls Water Board does plan to sue the city if drilling begins in New York State. 
Western Europe's proximity to Canada has already invited in fracking infrastructure through the proposed construction of a compressor station in East Aurora to move, pencil, to move fracked gas from Pennsylvania upwards. The type of fracking, a type of fracking used in Collins, New York, 40 minutes from here, and in other south towns, has already led to water so contaminated that it sets on fire. All this without also considering that the area sit atop a portion of the Marcellus Shale and completely on top of the Utica Shale, which is already being fracked in Ohio. If New York is opened up to frackers, we must realize that no regulation will stop the degradation of water, air, land, and food quality. No matter where we live in New York State, we will be impacted. We cannot expect to have fracking in our food shed and our watershed and not feel the consequences. All of this has an impact on our businesses and on our community and on all of the residents of our community. As I mentioned, 102 local businesses and organizations have stepped up to demand that the Senator protect them and all New Yorkers by supporting Bill 4220, a ban on hydrofracking. Some of the small businesses that have signed on are not the usual suspects. Some of them include Animal, Heart Animal Rescue and Adoption Team, Vito the Barber, Crazy for Books, Lexington Co-op, Buffalo Tax Service, Squeaky Wheel, Thorpe's Organic Family Farm, Great Harvest Bread Company, and the Pilates Loft. The list goes on and on. Community environmental and social justice groups that are speaking out also include the Buffalo Board of Law Clubs, Forest District Civic Association, St. Joseph University Social Justice Committee, Canisius College Historical Society, Massachusetts Avenue Project, Rediscover Riverside, Push Buffalo, Sierra Club Niagara Group, Occupy Buffalo, Coalition for Economic Justice, Outspoken for Equality, Citizen Action of Western New York, Western New York Peace Center, Working Families Party of Western New York, and the Green Party of Western New York. So it's not just us here today, it's all of these other groups that are demanding a ban on fracking. Even many religious groups are realizing that this threatens God's, God's green earth and God's creation. A lot of religious organizations have urged Senator Grisanti to support the ban as well. Some of them include Lafayette Avenue Presbyterian Church, the Interfaith Peace Network, People of Peace at, people, I'm sorry, People of Peace at Pilgrim St. Luke's, Order of the Felician Sisters, Mary Queen of Angels Regional Catholic School, Riverside Salem, and the Care for Creation Committee of the Catholic Diocese of Buffalo have all signed on to one of these letters to ask Rasandi to support a ban. There is a growing recognition that the state's proposed regulations will fail to protect New York residents and the, straight, and the state's drinking water supply from the toxic chemicals used in fracking. The question is now whether Senator Grisanti will listen to the oil and gas industry or the people of Western New York. There is a strong mandate for Senator Grisanti to put a stop to the process of opening up New York to fracking. We've seen the accidents, the spills, the contamination, the economic hardships caused by fracking play out far too often in our neighboring states. Western New Yorkers deserve to have these ominous warnings acknowledged the concern stems, as I said, not only from environmental groups, but from the entire community this our time. Next speaker, I'd like to take a minute to thank everyone who was involved in helping to get these petition signatures, uh, the people that helped to canvas businesses, that talked to organizations, and that overall engaged the community in this fight against fracking. Thank you, thank you for making today such a success. Um, we really did do a great job in, in creating this new consciousness around this issue in Western New York. So for our next speaker, oh, and I'd also like to add, too, that this is not the end. On Thursday, we're actually doing a call-in day to Senator Grisanti, uh, and I have flyers for that that I'm going to distribute in a minute. Um, and if you haven't signed our fracked, our fracked ground display over here, please do so as well. So our next speaker is going to be Bob Shishelsky from the Sierra Club Niagara Group. He is the chair of the Sierra Club Niagara Ener I'm sorry, he's chair of Sierra Club New York's Energy Committee and also involved in Sierra Club Niagara Group. So everybody, give a round of applause for Bob. Woo! Good. <laughs>
Thank you, Rita, and thank you everyone for coming today. It cleared up nicely for our, our gathering here. We're here today to tell Senator Mark Rosani that the New York State Senate should be given the opportunity to vote on Senate Bill 4220, the bill to prohibit fracking in New York State. Unless and until the process of high volume horizontal hydrofracking for natural gas can be shown to be safe. And it is a fact that the more studies that are made of the horizontal drilling process in the Marcellus Shale, the less likely it will ever be that horizontal drilling can be deemed to be safe in this state. You are aware of the 66,000 comments made to the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation already on the question of hydrofracking. This was without any hearings being conducted in the larger upstate cities of Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, Utica, or Albany, which will all be affected by the billions of gallons of frac waste produced annually by high volume horizontal drilling. With a great number of comments having been made concerning horizontal drilling, the strategy of the Republican leadership of the state Senate to prevent the vote on Senate Bill 4220 is callous and flies in the face of democracy. Keeping bills locked in committee may be a common legislative tactic, but to do so concerning a bill that affects the physical health of every New Yorker is morally wrong. Concerning the frac waste, a minimum of six billion gallons of this hazardous waste is conservatively estimated by the DEC to be produced annually by fracking. DEC Commissioner Joseph Martins himself has acknowledged that there is currently no technology available to treat these billions of gallons of frac waste. And yet he steadfastly continues to state that no health study of the effects of these toxic chemicals are necessary. His answer is that health effects studies should wait until after toxic waste have been introduced into public water supplies. <laughs> oh. His cavalier attitude towards the public health is unconscionable, and unfortunately the Republicans have taken this same position. Yet Senator Grisanti's answer to the hazardous wastewater question has not been to permit a vote on the fracking prohibition bill, but to speak of visiting a waste plant in Pennsylvania that, he, that claims to be able to handle the frack waste. Of course, the industry is, is consistently denied that there is any danger from the frack waste, so any waste, tra waste treatment plant they put together will be, quote, perfectly safe, end of quote, for the public's water, as they like to say continuously. <laughs> it is also well known by the industry in the DEC, and presumably Senator Grisani, although not acknowledged by any, that the Marcellus Shale contains 100 times the radioactive material and radon that are contained in other shale formations. Release of radioact radioactive materials, including uranium, strontium, thorium, alpha and gamma rays, and radon, make the gas and waste produced by drilling the Marcellus Shale particularly dangerous to the public and the environment. The Senator's stock answer that the citizens can trust the experts at the DEC to ensure the safety of gas fracking should also be seriously questioned. Hiding behind the DEC should not be a reason to prevent the vote on the S4220. Concerning the Department of Environmental Conservation, it is charged with protecting the drinking waters of the state of New York. Unfortunately, it has another mandate through its Division of Mineral Rights, which operates as part of the Department of Environmental Conservation. And that mandate is to produce gas and oil within this state. These conflicting goals have permitted the agency, which New York citizens depend on for protecting its waterways, to be used by the oil and gas industry to further opposite aims. The regulations which were drafted by the DEC were in fact created by the Division of Mineral Rights, which employs a number of persons directly connected to the gas and oil industry. The Division has also used consultants from the gas and oil industry concocting the environmental impact statement, which is currently being reviewed. The Senator is in fact aware of this. Other studies have shown dangers to our health and environment, not only from hazardous waste products, 
but from the drilling process itself. A lengthy study by noted geologist and hydrologist Paul Rubin and his company HydroQuest on the inevitable leakage of gas drilling casings is important. The HydroQuest study showed that while many high volume gas casings will leak immediately or within several years, almost all will fail within 80 to 100 years of installation. And this is acknowledged by the industry. So the process is inherently unsafe. Leaks will occur even where there are two or three layers of steel and concrete used. Rubin's study was submitted to the Delaware River Basin Commission while it was considering permitting horizontal drilling in its jurisdiction. Luckily, the commission had at its mandate the protection of the waters of the Delaware Basin, quote, in perpetuity, end of quote. And after reviewing the HydroQuest study, a vote on permitting drilling in the Delaware Basin by the commission members was postponed indefinitely. Another study concerning the inherent dangers of fracking is done by Thomas Myers of the National Groundwater Association. He has shown through computer modeling the likelihood that the underground chemicals injected by the industry in the high volume drilling process will migrate throughout the Marcellus watershed. The enormous pressure at which high volume drilling is conducted of 10,000 to 15,000 pounds per square inch causes a much quicker fracturing and migration of the industrial fracking chemicals, the naturally occurring heavy metals, and radioactive materials already occurring underground. Marcella Shale is a unique ge geological formation. It is not only fractured horizontally, but also vertically because of the stresses caused by the uplifting of the Appalachian and Allegheny mountain ranges where it is found. So it is much more likely that the toxic waste and chemicals introduced underground will migrate to the surface. Several employees of the DEC have themselves testified to the fact that if most, if not that, that most, if not all, gas drills will eventually leak. Examination of the hundreds of polluted water wells located near gas and oil wells in nearby Cattaraugus and Chautauqua counties, not too far from us, which involved much older and safer vertical drilling techniques, also shows the dangers. And yet the DEC, they cannot connect the petroleum in these wells to the gas wells drilled because no baselines were ever established. This is a type of reasoning which favors an industry and continue them to permit and deny responsibility for their acts. So the Republican leadership and Senate should not hide behind the DEC as a reason for not voting on S4220. They should permit a vote. I think they are aware of the fact that just two years ago, both the Senate and Assembly of New York voted for a moratorium, overwhelmingly voted for a moratorium on fracking until the safety of the process could be studied. I think as the problems with the fracking continue to grow and are shown, these Republicans are afraid to permit a vote. So we call on Senator Grisani today to permit a Senate vote on S4220 to prohibit natural gas uh, fracturing in New York State. And as a member of the Sierra Club, I would just like to state that it's hard to believe that our society permit a destructive horizontal gas drilling process to continue when the ability of technology to produce clean renewable energy is stifled by the vested fossil fuel, natural gas, and nuclear industries. Germany alone produces 20% of its electricity from renewable sources. And a recent article stated that in a two-day period within the last month, 50% of Germany's electricity was provided by solar power alone. This is a type of advances that we should be making instead of being wed to the fossil fuel industry regardless of how much money they have. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you so much for that bomb. It was great. Let's all get another down in the Get up the bomb. Oh, okay, next we're going to have Charlie Bowman, who is the interim director of the Western New York Peace Center. He's going to talk a little bit more about fracking and the dangers and also why this is an important issue for groups like the Western New York Peace Center.
Yes! Charlie, talk to us. Yeah, I know. All right. Yes. Okay, so why is hydrofracking a danger to groundwater? Uh, some of the stuff I'm going to be repeating from Bob's lecture. The, uh, what's the best evidence? And they know this before, before they even considered hydrofracking. Can you hear me? Okay. All right, they know this. How do they know this? They excluded New York City watershed from hydrofracking. Why? Because it's very, very dangerous and they don't want to uh, poison the source of water for, what, 10 million, 12 million people? Um, you know, they vote. Okay, that's, you know. They're saving Wall Street. They're saving Wall Street. Well, Wall Street's included in that too, so. Anyways. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they want clean water. Okay, and Syracuse is powerful enough. But where, what are the powerless people? What are the expendable people? The expendable people are the people uh, roughly 800,000 in Southern Tier, uh, particularly the 200,000 in the Stuben. Western New York. Well, that's so much. But a lot of the hydrofracking is going to be going on in Chemung, Chemung yeah. Schuyler, and Stuben okay. County, where the, it's something called the fairway, where the gas and the Marcellus Shale is under pressure and it's easier to extract and where the Marcellus Shale is thicker. Out here uh, in western New York the Marcellus Shale is thinner and so it's, there's less economic driving force to do it out here but there's still wells being, leases being made in the southern tier here in western New York. Anyway, it's inherently dangerous and they recognize this and they went to the least politically important people and uh, they looked at the farming industry down here and said this would be a wonderful thing to help support your farms. And in Cooperstown, I want to uh, jump ahead here, hydrofracking. In Jerusalem, New York, there's a bad hydro hydrofracking. God only knows where Jerusalem, New York is, but it's on the shores near Lake Keuka Lake. In Ulysses, New York, there's a ban. In Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and Buffalo, there's bans. In Wales, okay, thank you. Um, so how important is this water to corporate profits? There's a beer maker, there's a brewery in Cooperstown, New York, and uh, the Oh My God Brewery, and uh, he says, the CEO says, the hydrofracking is a threat to our livelihood. He has 30 million in sales, he's got 40 employees in Cooperstown, and they use two aquifers. They, they, they drilled into two aquifers to make their beer. And why? Why? We should, and this is something that we don't hear about often. He says, here's a guy running a 30 million dollar corporation, he says, upstate New York water has a reputation around the country, around the country, it's very, very good. Um, it has the right balance of minerals uh, for beer making. And so what should we be doing with New York State Aquifer Water? We should be making beer and not gas, right? <laughs> Make beer, not gas. Big beer, not gas. Big beer, not gas. Okay, and in Cooperstown, there's class warfare going on. Uh, the co-ops, the local co-ops in Cooperstown are refusing to buy produce from farmers who have assigned leases with gas companies. And that's, that is a thought that may be uh, expandable to Western New York. Know, what, where do Wegmans get it in the summertime? Where do Tops get it in the summertime? Uh, yeah. you know, maybe we should be exploring some of these ideas uh, if hydrofracking goes forward. Um, that only works for the farmers who are actually living on the farms, but about one third of the farms in Cooperstown area uh, are owned by absentee landlords, and they don't care what's going on. They just want to get their profits. There's lots of contaminants in the hydrofracking water. Uh, they have to add hundreds of uh, toxic chemicals and they inject it deep down into the well. 
And what happens afterwards? Well, most of that water stays down into in the well. Only about, at most, 30 or 40 percent of it comes back uh, to the surface. But the majority of it stays down there. And what happens when you have uh, hundreds of toxic materials buried deep in the ground? We have a name for that around western New York. What is it? Does anybody know? It's called Love Canal. So for each uh, hydrofracking well, and there'll be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them down there, we'll have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Love Canals down there, and all that water is under pressure, and it'll be percolating up, as the Tom Myers paper said, in, uh, published in a peer-reviewed scientific journal, uh, all his peers said, uh, well, three or four maybe, said, hey, this is a great paper, let's publish it. And uh, those peers have no axe to grind, and then perhaps some of them got their, some of their grant money from the gas company. So this is uh, a paper that has been vetted, and he says that within 10 years, we'll be seeing hydrofracking wastewater uh, toxic materials percolating up into our aquifers and our rivers and streams. This is 10 years, and without hydrofracking, the estimates are on the order of, uh, you know, millions of years. So, so the pressure, the, the gigantic amounts of pressure that they apply to release the gas, to expand the cracks, uh, you know, it causes global damage underneath our aquifers. And uh, it's a toxic time bomb. It's a weapon of mass destruction. There's no doubt about it. Senator Grassani, by his silence, is supporting the placement of a weapon of mass destruction under western New York, under the southern tier of New York State. And uh, there's, there, there's no other, there's no other phrase to describe that. That's exactly what Senator Grassani is doing. He's placing a, a, a weapon of mass destruction under there, under our aquifers. And in terms of truck traffic, um, you know, one well may be up to um, 1,300 18-wheeler truck trips to fracking over a you know, several week period. That's 1,300 truck trips, so that means the truck will be leaving a well every few minutes, 24-7. And the amount of damage caused to a road by an 18-wheeler is uh, equivalent to roughly 10,000 cars. Uh, so one well will cause the equivalent road damage of 13 million vehicles. Now keep in mind, in the southern tier, there's roughly 800,000, and so maybe there's uh, you know 500,000 vehicles in the southern tier. And so this is an absolute road insult to the southern tier. There's no way to clean up the water. There's that, as Bob said, there's absolutely no way to clean up the water. And so a lot of it's going to be stored uh, by virtue of uh, physics of the situation underground and about 40% uh, or 30% of it is going to come back on the surface and again here is a toxic time bomb waiting on the surface. We have one on the, on the, uh, in the Marcellus Shale that's percolating up and we have another toxic time bomb waiting on the surface and we have to segregate that from the biosphere. Why? Because it will kill people, it will kill organisms, it will kill animals. Uh, and so, what happens? You know, you know, we can't permanently segregate this stuff. There's no known technology. You know, we can send uh, interplanetary space vehicles, uh, you know, pinpoint accuracy over billions of miles, but we don't know how to remove 400 chemicals uh, from toxic wastewater. You know, so the, the uh, we have to segregate this. And there's no known way of doing that. All second. All segregation facilities, technology, will eventually fail, as Bob said. All right. And you're a biologist. You know about those things. I know about biology. I don't know about uh, tox uh, technology of segregation. Yeah, but you know okay. what you're talking about. So, okay. All right. The tourism industry. Yeah. Um, 
in the three county region, the Chemung, Schuyler, and Steuben, where there's going to be a lot of hydrofracking going on. Uh, that's a uh, $239 billion tourism industry, and that industry, uh, even in this economy, is increasing 10% a year. Uh, that's a growing industry. So if you can invest your money at 10%, what would you do? Uh, do hydrofracking or would you do tourism? Tourism. Tourism is the way to go. And it's generating $31 million in state and local taxes down there. And that's going to go up by 10% uh, to the state and local uh, treasuries. Uh, so if they bring in uh, you know, thousands of 18-wheeler trucks, Blocking the roads down there, that's going to be the end of tourism, a growing industry in that uh, area. All right. So basically, it's a toxic time bomb on the surface, it's a toxic time bomb on the ground underneath, uh, and we don't know how to clean it up, and we don't know how to store it. So we should not do it in the first place. There's no, there can be no other, uh, no other conclusion from all this idiocy that's going on in Albany concerning this. Okay, I think anybody else. <laughs> okay, our next speaker is going to be Beth Elkins, who is a Buffalo business owner. She owns the Pilates Law, and she was one of the 102 businesses that have signed on to ask the senator to support a ban on fracking. So give it up for Beth. Yeah. Woo! June 12, 2001, into a birthing tub. A few years later, I had another water birth with our son, Riley. My children were born into water. Buffalo, New York, tap water. I never imagined that 11 years later, we'd be worried about the safety of that water. Worried about water in New York State? Worried about water in America? Where will our children live when the water in New York State becomes contaminated by fracking? contaminated by mercury, methane, formaldehyde, lead, benzene, uranium, and 595 other chemicals. Where will we all live when the pipes leak and these chemicals migrate into our water supply? I teach Pilates. <laughs> Most of you probably know that Pilates is all the rage and football players and supermodels are doing it to strengthen their core. Um, <laughs> But you might not have known that Joseph Pilates came to America from Germany in 1926 and opened a studio in New York City with his wife. Joe and Clara Pilates were small business owners. They lived in Manhattan and vacationed upstate along the Hudson River. Like so many other immigrants, they were able to come to America, specifically New York, with a dollar and a dream, and they went on to create an exercise method that is currently practiced all over the world. Do you think Joe and Clara and millions of other immigrants would have flocked here if the water made people sick? As the owner and operator of the Pilates Loft, I signed on with Food and Water Watch to support a ban on fracking because I am committed to the health and wellness of my clients and my children. I am very concerned about the 600 chemicals used in fracking and the fact that many of them remain undisclosed. I teach my children and my clients to respect their bodies and know what goes into them. So how dare these corporations make millions of dollars without having to disclose what chemicals they are using 
and without having to pay for their toxic messes. And how dare the politicians have allowed this to happen. In Pennsylvania, first-hand reports of neurological damage caused by drinking water contaminated by fracking is terrifying and completely unacceptable. People cannot drink their water, they cannot bathe in their water without breaking out in lesions or passing out. They cannot afford their medical bills, they cannot afford their lawyer's fees. Their properties are worthless, and they actually live in fear of their houses exploding. That ain't right. <laughs> that ain't right. As a business owner, I strive to have integrity and accountability. I do not trust that ExxonMobil, Chesapeake Energy, Chevron, Halliburton, and BP will ever put safety before profits. Amen to that. They are all currently involved in lawsuits and have all, sadly, been involved in infamous oil spills. And I know that the DEC does not have the resources to effectively monitor these greedy corporate giants. There's a lot of talk about the economic benefits of fracking, but the more we know, the more we realize this is another deception. For instance, how does New York benefit if the frackers don't live in New York State and the gas is then sold to China? The answer is it doesn't. We do not benefit. Based on reports from other states, 80% of the money from fracking would leave New York State. And incredibly, New York State gets no state production tax, no income tax, and no severance tax from fracking, as is the normal in other states. So actually, the current environmental impact statement and regulations on fracking are bad business. There could be a series of statewide business collapses if our aquifers were to become contaminated. And as a small business owner, I can tell you there are no economic benefits when you are sick. It's not easy to be a small business owner. There are risks and challenges, and sometimes I feel like I'm pushing a boulder up a hill. But I respect my clients, and I want to provide them the very best. Mr. Grisanti, wherever you are today, I assume that when you decided to pursue politics, it wasn't because you thought it would be easy. I hope it was because you want Western New Yorkers to prosper, and you felt you could be a good advocate. We are here today, Mr. Grisanti, urging you to stand up for the health and welfare of your constituents and to make a prudent business decision. Please do the right, honest, decent, and possibly hard thing to do. Please support a ban on fracking in New York State. Thank you. Woo!